Welcome to the Homeschool Together podcast. Where one working mom and a stay-at-home dad help you navigate the nuts and bolts of the growing and dynamic world of homeschooling. With a focus on early learners. Like me! All the ins and outs of building and maintaining your homeschool life. Homeschool! Find out tips and tricks to make things like this easier. I'm reading! And ultimately, enjoy educating your kids. And what's that last thing? Have fun together! Did I do good, Daddy? (laughs) Yeah, you did, sweetie. Good job. Hello and welcome to Homeschool Together Podcast. Thanks again for joining us. If you want to connect with us, head down into the show notes. You'll see all the social media links. You'll also see our link to the great resource guide that we've put together. And if you could head over to iTunes, slam us with a nice five-star review. Super awesome, super beautiful, sultry voice of Matt. <laughs> we we really do. We do appreciate it. appreciate do. everybody's iTunes reviews. So I want everybody to sit down, calm down, go into your happy place. Because we are going directly like John Malkovich, into John Malkovich's mind. We're going right into Ariel's brain today. <laughs> We're going to be talking about Trello. By popular and, demand. By, and people voted on Yeah, this. by the the voting on, on the Facebook group. They wanted people Trello. Have spoken. Ariel, the fans want Trello, and we are going to deliver Trello. If you remember back way in the Wayback Machine, back in early episodes, we talked about how Ariel is a project planner, project manager. She's really talented. She's a doer. She's one of those people that always sends the email when they need to send the email. She's the, <laughs> she's the person who's got the planning document. Excel is kind of like that sixth finger on the end of her hand. <laughs> she's a planner. And so I know you're sitting back going, this woman's crazy. She's planning everything in Trello. What is she doing? We're going to get the lowdown. And hopefully you get a couple converts today and get people into it. I mean, I don't think you got to be a professional to use Trello. And uh, That's so- right. That's a good point because... I can use Trello, and I am not the planning type at Don't all. Don't let him fool you. Don't let him fool He loves Kanban boards. I love sticky notes on whiteboards. <laughs> that oh, that's, that's true. Hard. You're very old school. You know, er, it took me er, a no, long Mike, time. I, listen, I have, you know, as an aside, I used to do software project management, you know, product owner. Uh, we used to manage, you know, 90 developer pro- software projects, millions of lines of code, and we used to use sticky notes to do it. So... That don't knock it until you try it. <laughs> you know, it's funny. I, I've always been the one that had like the big paper calendar on my desk. And yeah. I love paper planners. I mean, they're just, they're beautiful. And, and I love those. And it's been really hard for me to convert to something digital. But once you go digital, you never go back. <laughs> so we're going to be talking about Trello and all the good things about it. We're going to talk a little bit about like what it is, get into you know, how to use it. And then we're going to talk a little bit about the advanced techniques for everybody here, there's going to be some great links in the in the show notes for some YouTube videos on how to use Trello, yeah, basic or demos by other homeschoolers. Yeah, and so there's a there's a nice Facebook group as well for home uh, Trello for homeschoolers that a good place to ask questions. And also, you know, hop into the Facebook group because Ariel will be love to chat Trello with. Oh you. yeah, I'm happy to answer anyone's questions or help you out. No yeah. problem at all. Yeah, and if you if you want, maybe I'll get her to record some videos and we'll we'll post uh, some yeah, videos. That's, not happening. that's probably not going to happen. <laughs> So Ariel, the big question, what is this goofy word, Trello? So lay it out for people. Right. So Trello is an online project management tool. It is free, which is awesome. There is a a business class, I think it's called Gold, that you can buy. If you get to be a super Trello planner, you may decide to do that. Even myself, who could, I, I consider myself a power user of Trello, I don't have the, the paid version. I still use the free version. So there's nothing wrong. There's not a big limitation with using the free version. But the whole concept of Trello is that it's a highly visual planning board that's ultra flexible. So once you create lists or tasks or boards, you can move things around, reposition them. Um, it's super user-friendly in so, that way. So go through, you just said a couple you know, interesting words that are unique to Trello. So maybe talk about what is a board, what is a card, what is a task? Right. So the way that, uh, the way that Trello is organized, you create a board. So, so think, just, think of like a message board or a cork board or something like that. Right. And it looks sort of like right. that. It's like, it, it's, uh, so I, I'm just going to use what we have as an example. So throughout this, I'll just talk about it like this. Okay. So I have a Trello board called Blossom and Root Early Years Volume 2. 
And that's what we're using right now with our daughter. So everything on that board pertains to just that curriculum. Now I have different boards. I have boards for reading and, and other things, but let's just say I've got this. Within that board, there are, are things called lists and they're in columns. And I could have a list that says um, week one. And within that list, I have cards and each card is a task that we're going to do during that week. So the first card uh, is for like week one. First card might be the music that we have to do, right? Wasn't it, or was the, it, the, the was it Beethoven? Beethoven. Yeah. So the first card is Beethoven, and then the next card in week one is Beatrix is Potter story. Right, right. Oh, we're reading Peter Rabbit, and the next card is the read together activity, and the next card, and it goes all the way down. And so that's the way that it's organized. Now, what's really great about Trello is that you can take those cards and those lists, and you can move them around anywhere you want. So if you decide. Well, I was supposed to do Beethoven this week, but I didn't get to it. I just I just click on the card and drag it over to the next list for the next week. I don't have to scratch out a paper planner. That's a problem with paper. It's great. It's 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 like highly satisfying to write it and to see it. It's beautiful. It, but it's then it's best laid yeah. plans, right? Cuz it's almost obsolete from the moment that you start. <laughs> right? I, I it just is. It's not that it's not that that many things always come up, but homeschooling, it's supposed to be flexible. Mm -hmm. uh, it, you know, it's r wrapped up in our lives. It doesn't just march on like public school and, you know, whether you're with it or not, it's going on. A and it seems like every week things need to shift. They need to move. And that's what's so great about Trello. And if you have a paper planner and you say, okay, well, we didn't do math today. I'm going to move it to next week. You strike out math for this week and you write it in next week. For me, there's like a, I don't know, it's like a lingering sense of guilt there. Like You failed. Yeah, I didn't get it done this week and now <laughs> I've got to write it next week. Well, with Trello, when I move it, there's no record that it was ever there. Yeah, so and, I don't have to feel bad about it. And it's a it. physical move. Like there's a column. And one of the reasons why I like the, you can think of it as a column where you have all these cards and it's, as Ariel said, broken up by weeks. It's great for those states or those individuals that need to log what they've done. Right. And we'll talk more about record yeah. keeping okay, definitely great. in the yeah. way that we use it. So just to go into the structure, we've got boards, we have lists, we have cards. The cards are where all the information is contained. So the boards have just a name. The list has just a name. There's no information besides those pieces, right? And the board can have some cool And so cool the lists are the vertical columns with all the cards. Okay, right. Great. The lists are the vertical columns. So in those cards, let's talk about each card as like it's a task. Like let's say it's Beethoven, like, okay? Like we're doing Eric Satay this, this right. week. Right, whatever you, it you, is. You have a card that says here, the composer that we're working, mm -hmm. great pianist if you if you want to enjoy it. Um, and you linked in like four YouTube videos right. for so us to use. That's the great thing about cards. Cards contain all your information. They have a title for the, the card. You can then put a description of what you want to do. Like, um, you know, let's say you're, you're going to do a science activity about volcanoes, right? So you title it, you know, volcano activity. You can write in the description, we're going to do this and we're going to do this experiment and then we're going to read a book and we're going to do whatever you're in, well, in your and description. And a lot of the things that you end up doing is you end up taking, like say we have the Blossom and Root curriculum, you're copying and pasting the text from that, that activity right. directly into the card right. from so the that, PDF. So that we don't even have to refer to the original PDF from Blossom yeah. and Root. I'm just taking the description and and saying right here this is what you should be doing this is what you should be discussing right so let's say you're doing the volcano thing and so you paste it in your description of what you want to do then what you can also do you can add a checklist into that card like let's say you need some materials for your volcano experiment oh i need all these materials you put a checklist in there so you can check the boxes when you pulled all the materials together maybe you want to watch a video about volcanoes you go ahead and link a youtube video about volcanoes maybe there's a, an internet a website where you can watch an active volcano to see it smoking or whatever you can put a li internet link to that maybe you have a a book or something else on google drive or pictures maybe you went and visited a volcano and you've got photographs of your trip to hawaii it's a and great you can way to link, link to google drive yeah, it's all, all these in digital that links, same yeah. card yeah. so and why is this pop why is this powerful tool because it's not just available via the browser you know you use the web browser to mm -hmm. to do these things but they also have ios apps and android. and android apps as well and why that's so powerful is a lot of the times when i'm in the homeschool room i'm just have my phone right. and i have trello open and 
you know, all the boards sync across all the platforms. So if you have an iPad, if you're running everything off an iPad, or if you have like an Android tablet or an Android phone or an iPhone, they all sync together. That's right. So anytime you add something new, like if you sit at the desktop and you're doing all this fancy stuff like Ariel's doing, it will just magically show up. Right. On you the, on you the thing, don't yeah. even use the Blossom and Root PDF. I don't. You just use what I've put put in there. So, yeah. so what I want to say about these cards is really you can do a million things with them. Yeah. They link to Dropbox, to Google Drive. You can do attachments for YouTube. You can embed pictures. So you have a picture of that volcano or whatever Well, this whatever is really good is. with the artwork. Like a lot of times oh, right. you, like you will have We're the studying art. Renoir. So yeah. I, I embedded a picture. The picture that we need to do, yeah. Right. It's a, it's a, you know, I went to Wikipedia. I grabbed a picture of this Renoir uh, painting and I went ahead and put it right in the card. So when you need to study Renoir with her, you bring it up on the iPad Maybe you connect it to the TV so you can have it really big. But you have the picture right there. You don't need to search for it. Exactly. So cards are so powerful. You can put due dates on cards. I mean, there's a bunch of stuff you can do with cards. I think what I really want to say with that, I don't want to scare anybody, right, that these cards can do a lot of things. Your card can be as simple as a title. Mm -hmm. It can just say... Well, your math ones are like that. Right. Math math. lesson one. Do reading. Right. It, It doesn't have to be complicated. Or you can do all these trick things with it. And that's what I like about Trello. It's it's adaptable to however deep you want to go. If you just want to put a title, hey, do write, start math, lesson lesson four, that's fine. And, and that's the whole card and that's great. Or you can link to this and link to that and put a picture in and make it snazzy and add a description or add a checklist. I mean, it can do as much as you want it to do. Mm-hmm. So if you want to be simple, you want to start small. It's totally fine. You can totally do that. I don't want to scare anybody by, oh my gosh, it has all these options because it is the fastest thing. You literally click in a list at the bottom. It says add task with a little plus sign. You click it, you type something in, hit enter, and the task is there. Yeah, it, it's it's that simple. easy. It is super fast, um, very responsive. It's not like laggy as far as being an online tool goes, which I really appreciate. So I don't want to scare anybody about the complexity. You can get as complex or as easy as you want with the whole thing. And and another thing you like to do is you like to color code things. And so you can put different colors on the cards that can indicate different subjects. Right. Cards have labels. So I can put math all in blue and I can title it math. This is a great way to organize things for different kids. Yes. You know, all of your first kid is blue and all of your second kid is red or whatever it is. And and you you can label, you can color code the the titles of the cards if you want to a different color i mean there's a lot of really great options and that trello for home educators facebook group is a great place to say like well this is what i want to do how would i use trello to do this exactly so if you're coming from a paper planner or a a different uh, type of you know planning software or something and you want to do it in trello those are the best folks to ask about. If you can't figure out exactly how to make it work, you know, those are the folks that will be able to help. Well, and also, too, is if the topic is something that the child is doing or or something that they're completing, you can you 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 can take pictures of it and include it in the card. Yeah, this is a fantastic uh, feature of Trello. So this is one of the ways we're, we'll talk more about how we use it, but you can go ahead and embed um, picture. So let's say that for your state, you need to have records of everything your kid's done, samples of work. There's not, unfortunately, there's not a great export feature for Trello right now. Yeah. So that that's not perfect. But what you can do is if you need to do an art project, say, you can go ahead and snap a picture of that, attach it right to the Trello card, and then you have a record forever of the artwork that your child did that went with that task. So, or if it's a writing task or if you're doing right. copy work and things of that, Anything. and you don't want to keep a million pieces of paper, you just take a picture of it, store it on there. It's just a great way to archive it. Right. Tell me a little bit of how you can collaborate between users. How, how does that work? Right. So not only can I, you know, have you view my boards and things on on the iPhone or whatever, we're on the same account, but you can also share boards. So I have a friend who's also doing early years volume two with her daughter, Blossom and Root, and we have actually shared our board. She's an art history major. So she's adding in more depth to each of the artists that we're studying. She's adding in extra works to the composers and things. And so she's helping me to enrich what we're doing every week. Yeah. And we're actually collaborating between two people. So there's no uh, there's no charge for that. That's part of the free 
the free program. The only thing you have to remember is that uh, when you're collaborating, anything that's altered is it's altered on both sides. Yeah. So this is great if you have another like a little co-op, or mm-hmm. if you have you know a group of homeschoolers that are all working together, or if you're going to have you know group activity and you guys are kind of like a forest school or something like that. You can obviously share your board and you can right. you have a common board. And you, like, say, hey, don't forget your you know, galoshes or your, your coats or, you know, make sure you bring these items and you can just use that as a collaborative right. board. Yeah. You totally can. You will need to upgrade to a paid version if you want other people to be able to view your board without editing that. So just something to remember depending on how you want to use it. Okay. So that's one really great thing is that it does allow collaboration between folks. Uh, the other thing that I think is interesting is that nothing is ever really deleted it's archived. Hmm. So the, the tasks are all archived when you're done. So if you accidentally did something, you can search in, in the archive and you can go ahead and pull back up cards hmm. and lists and things that you may have archived. Okay, that's cool. So how are our Trello boards organized? And you know, is it something unique? What do you do that's different? The way that we've organized, um, so I have a different board for every curriculum. And so by I, we, I mean you. How did you organize the boards? <laughs> so I have a board for all the different <laughs> curriculums. So I have one for early years, volume two. I'm getting ready to start Torchlight K and Build Your Library Zero with our, our kinder um, in a couple of months. So I have a board for that that I'm planning on. Uh, I have a board for reading and I keep all of the, I keep pictures of all of the books that we have read with our daughter read alouds. And I also use this as a great store of ideas for different books. I'm on homeschool forums and people are like, oh, my kids are need a new book and they like this type of thing. And people recommend all these wonderful books. Like, where would I categorize this? So I have a board for reading. I have a, I have so a. So you're using it almost as like a digital scratch pad in some yeah, respects. It can, yeah. it can be. Like a note taking thing. Thing. Yeah, it's a it's a terrific place to just take notes for something. So, and so there's no limit to the amount of boards you have. You with know, the if free? there's a limit, I have not reached it, and I have a lot of boards. I yeah. don't think that there's any discernible limit. I've seen people have you know 40 boards or more. Okay. It's not, so I don't think that there's a limit to that um, that anyone would really hit. So on the on the reading books, for example, when I hear about these great books, I have a, I have a list called read alouds to sort. And I just have these in there. And the reason I say to sort is all the lists after it are read alouds by year. So, okay, read alouds age seven, read alouds age nine, right? So when I hear about these books, I do, I go on to Common Sense Media, which we've talked about before. I try to take a look at like, what age is this really meant for? And I can slot it in the right place so that I have this great wealth of books that I can read to my, to my children. That are technically age appropriate, right? That are age appropriate that were recommended by other users. So that's my reading board. I have a right start math board that has all of our lessons for right start math there and anything extra that I think will go with it. Um, I have a board for morning songs and I've got a different card on there for different Sesame Street. You know, sometimes you need to listen to Bruno Mars. Don't give up. Uh, Don't give up. Thank Keep you. on trying. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, you know, I've got that. I have a bunch of, so you can just scroll through and go, ah, I need some pick me up Sesame Street this morning. And we play, you play that for our daughter and that's great. So I have morning songs. I have one for uh, the unit studies that I'm working on. And I have a different list for every unit study um, that I've worked on. I also have lists for future years. So I haven't decided formally on what we're going to do for first grade, for example. Um, so I just have a future board and mm-hmm. I have a list in there for, you know, the future grades. And when something comes up and somebody says, I found this great resource on prehistoric times or something, I just throw it in there. Yeah. And I think that's probably about first grade or whatever, or I don't know to sort later. And I just throw it in there. So when I'm seeing all these great ideas come up, come across on Facebook and Reddit and different places, I'm taking all of that in and I don't have to write it down somewhere. Mm-hmm. I just throw it into Trello. You in do fact, like a I quick, just... you do a quick triage and then you say, okay, this is for later for me to look at. Sure. Yes. And if they provided a link to it, great. If somebody says, oh, we made this really awesome project to do this science thing. I'm like, yeah. oh, cool. That's like totally not for my kid's age, but I don't want to, I mean, in the world of social media, I'm just going to lose that. I mean, let's just face it. Right? It's going to be, it's going to disappear if you, if you close the app and open it again. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. I'm never going to find that again. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to be able to probably even effectively search for it. So when someone says something that's great, I just I just toss it in. I mean, 
half of the resource guide that we've just released was built this way where people said, oh, I found this great book for Canada, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, okay, cool. And I, and I just started building this future list. And all of a sudden I had all these extension books yeah. that, you know, I could use. So that's one of the ways it's kind of, it's almost Pinteresty, but without having to have a picture to associate mm. it with, you can associate a picture if you want, but it's an awesome way to just chuck, chuck in ideas. Oh, I heard something about somebody else doing this thing with their, their fourth grader. Oh, that's so cool. I don't want to lose that. Put it there on that board. Um, then I also have a board for our reading. We're doing all about reading. So I have mm -hmm. one there with all of our reading lessons and some extra reading games and ideas and things. I have a game schooling board that has different lists for every different type of uh, subject that we want to reinforce through games and all the applicable games that we own that could help with that subject. But also games maybe to get in the future. Right. Yeah. And and I have a list for that too on that board yeah. that says these are games I think would be great to get. I, I You know, Ariel makes the money, but I limit her to one game a month, people. So <laughs> I haven't purchased it in the last few months because we have no one to play with. Play the board. Yeah, we have no one to play games with. <laughs> so... <laughs> But the games keep rolling in. I don't know. <laughs> Listen, I got that one free last month <laughs> from Amazon. Um, so so I, I've got one for games. And then the one that you use all the time mm -hmm. is called This Week. Yes. And that list is basically broken up. The first column is completed work, the first list. And then the lists are broken up Monday through Friday. And I have a weekend. And then I have a coming coming soon. So what I do every week before uh, you start on Sunday night, I go ahead and I go to the early years volume two to the week that we're at. I copy the list of that week and I move it over to this week board. Mm -hmm. And then I take all those tasks and I drag them into different days. And I kind of sprinkle them in where I think you're going to do them. Yep. And that's not exactly where they end up getting done maybe, but that's fine. I sprinkle them all in there. And if I know something has to happen on a weekend, for whatever reason, I keep it there on the weekend. And then I put the next week in the coming up, right? So, And that's a, that's a nice to have. I mean, that's not necessary for the homeschool mom to do or the homeschool dad to do that. Like if they just had the one vertical list for, say, week one or week oh, two. you totally could. They could just say, okay, here's all the mm -hmm. items I got to go through. And then you just scroll and say, okay, let's read the poetry Let's do our math lesson. Let's do our reading lessons. Let's read about Beethoven. Let's listen to some music. And you could just look at the list and say, oh, we've already done all these these things. I got to do this thing now. So then you go and do it. Right. Like you don't have to do this really elaborate copying and pasting thing. I've seen you do it. And I'm like, wow, that's a really nice thing she does for me every week. <laughs> I mean, it only takes, because it's already organized, Yeah, it's like copy, move, and then drag, 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 done. I mean, I think it takes me like less than two minutes to move it around. And I think it's nice because when you go into a day and you say, okay, well, it's Monday, you only see you have maybe four tasks for Monday or three tasks. You don't yeah. see this long list you have to scroll through. I mean, doing a, doing a pre-K curriculum is a lot different from kinder. When we get to kinder, yes. you'd be like scroll, scroll, scroll <laughs> through all the different books and things we have to read. So yep. it's nice to be able to break it up. And then when you finish things, you move them over, you drag them over to complete it. I just, I just dragged over the... Uh... While you were talking, I I dragged over, you know, the tale of Tom Kitten into the completed work. So there we go. Like it's super easy. I can do it from my phone. Yeah. Right. You drag it over at the end of the week when everything's gone to completed. When I'm setting up my next week, I take all the car. I take that whole completed list. I copy it and I move it to a board that I have called completed work. And I title it week of, you know, 1026 or whatever it is. And if you look at that board, I have a list for every single week all the work that we've done for that week. So if I ever wanted to go back and try to remember what we had done, it's all there. Yeah. And really, I think Trello is more, more about the setup. You don't, by any means, have to put your whole curriculum into Trello. I don't want anyone to think that. If you want to use, I mean, Blossom and Root or Torchlight or Build Your Library or one of these others, and you have a beautiful book and you like to check things off in the paper copy, like, don't think you need to do this. You don't have to. You could just have your Trello board be there for ideas. Or... Like, let's walk through. So somebody's listening to this and says, hey, this is a great thing to archive all the work that I've got to do. It's a great way to kind of, you know, archive what I've accomplished. Say there's a mom out there or a dad out there and they just want to do the simple title. Hey, do this, do this, maybe link in a couple uh, links. 
and maybe they want to have always have two weeks ahead. They're always doing two weeks ahead. How mm-hmm. much work would that take them to manage something like that? So, yeah. in your opinion, not going the full aerial, <laughs> you know, I'm doing, you know, all the color coding and all the copying thing. If they just have like a board and they have some columns, lists, and they're, it's like week one, week two, week three, how long would it take them to, you know, to make, you know, 15 cards for each week and, you know, to put in a few links? Yeah, I, I think that really a per week, you know, maybe less than 10 minutes. I, okay. I mean, it's just, it depends, right? If you just want to put in task titles for could, all the tasks you have to do that week, you could be done in five minutes. But you, if you want to put some links, you know, it might take a little Maybe long. just from the uh, the mechanic standpoint, if they have a, a list and that's the previous week and they're they're sitting there on Sunday evening, kids are asleep, they're trying to set up what they have to do for this week. Can they take a previous card and say copy paste? Absolutely. So there's a duplicate. So they can card. they can just duplicate. So a lot of the curriculums like Blossom and Root, they have the same structure every week. Right. So you can just copy paste, retitle everything, and call it a day. Yeah. So this gets into our advanced topics. Perfect. I guess so. We'll just move right into yeah. that. This is tips for advanced users. So if you're new to Trello, don't let the, any of this scare you. But yes, you can actually make complete. You can make template cards. Mm-hmm. So that if you want to have checklists already in them and things like that, you can make template cards. You can also make th- template lists. There you go. That was the question yep. I wanted to know. And so yeah. I, that's what I do. So when I plan the curriculum, so right now I'm in the middle of finishing the planning for our daughter's kinder year. I ha- And I'm I'm alternating between Torchlight and Build Your Library, right? So I have two template lists, one for each of them. The spines are already populated. The general movements are already there. What I'm doing is filling in the exact literature selections and mm-hmm you know, the exact uh, page pages 34 and 35. Yeah. Yeah. Right. I'm filling that in, but I already have pictures of all the spines. Cool. One of the things I love is using pictures of these books. It's easier for you when you're looking on the shelf to find something. You have no the idea. Cover is- <laughs> yeah. You have no idea. If you go that little bit extra route, like what Ariel's talking about, if you use your template and you put in the cover of that book, it's just visually when you're sitting there on your phone, figuring out what's going on, it makes life so much easier. <laughs> and, it's, and it's super easy to add a picture. Yeah. So I just open Amazon and I type in the title of the book and I click on the picture on the Amazon page for the book and I drag it to the card in Trello and there's the picture. It's oh, wow. literally that easy. That's nice. So, or you could right click copy and then paste into the card. Same, same deal. And it's called a card cover then. And so then the whole card is that picture of, I don't know, whatever it is. Well, it's beautiful, as we said, with the artwork, also for the the composer elements that we've been doing, you know, being able to see, oh, that's Beethoven or that's Mozart and just show Mm -hmm. them the picture of it. Really beautiful way to just kind of aliven up the experience, yeah. Right. So what what other advanced things that can users do? One of the things that you can do, which I think is really great, um, is that you can link between cards. This is like, maybe this should have been the last advanced topic, but... If you have so, a where, where do you use this specifically? This is the all about reading and the right, right. start math. Yes, this so, is, okay. I see this all the time. Yes, so that so, what you could do is, and what I did originally was, I had a card for every single lesson. Now, all about reading's got like uh, forty two or fifty lessons, something like yeah, that. But 60, yeah, 50 right lessons, start math yeah. has one hundred twenty five lessons, so I would need one hundred twenty five cards, and every week I would have to move over the specific lesson that you were going to do that week. And some weeks you um, you would get a little ahead, and so you'd do more. I had to keep up with you. Did you finish thirty six, or are you now in thirty seven? Or it was all it was all problem. And then somebody on this Facebook group, Trello for Home Educators, talked about linking between cards. So what I have is I have a Right Start Math um, Mastercard, a, yeah, Mastercard, and in that card I have a checklist with one hundred and twenty five items in the checklist. And so then I have a card. So I've got that card and it's got all the checks, right? And then on my this week um, board, I have a card that says, right, start math. And in that card, I clicked a button that said link to another Trello card. And I went and I cert- I went, looked for the board and looked for the card and I linked to the original math card. So now that right start math, when you open it, you see the checklist from the other card Mm -hmm. and you just go to the next one in the list. And when you finish it, it you hit the check mark and then you move it over. And every week I just copy that same card, that same right start math card over and over. I don't have ever have to change the card because you are checking the box within it every time, which is actually a different card. Yeah. 
I know the, that sounds complicated, no, but... Basically, the card is a pointer to another card. Exactly. It's like yes. a link to another card. I do it for All About Reading and Write Star Math, and it's really awesome. No, it was a great change because I was getting kind of dizzy on which ones I had, and they were piling up or they were... Well, yeah, and I it was hard. More. I had to keep checking yeah. with you on exactly what, which one were you on, and, and that was becoming difficult. I do really love checklists. One of the other ways that I, I do use checklists on each week, I have at the top of the week, I have materials. So when I'm talking about, you know, preparing for Torchlight and Build Your Library, I've got a, a card at the very top that says materials, and the top is all the extension books I need, and then I've got a checklist for that. You can have multiple checklists per card. So I've got a checklist for that. And then under it, I have a checklist for the art supplies I will need. And then below that, I have a checklist for the ingredients maybe that I need for the special recipe that week from whatever country. Mm-hmm. And I have it all right there. And I so I can go for that week and say, what materials am I going to need? Let me make sure that I reserve those books from the library. Go to the store and get the supplies. Gather the art supplies from all the various cabinets they live in, right? I can do all that prep. It's the same way that I did collecting all the books that I needed for those years. I made Trello cards. I made a Trello card with build your library spines and I made one with torchlight spines and I put checklists in there of all the books I needed. And then I put prices that I found on book finder. If you listen back to our finding, uh, buy all the books, buy all the books, buy all the books episode, right? I put a book finder and I put the ISBNs and, and the prices that I'd found. And then I watched, you know, so I could try to buy when things were appropriately priced and I checked things off in my list. So checklists are incredibly valuable in Trello. Use them however it would help you best. If there's any way in any time in your homeschool that you would use a checklist for something, just put it into a card in Trello. You'd yeah. be so thankful that you have it there and you have a memory of, oh yeah, I got to, you know, I got to remember that. Otherwise, I'd have to go into the curriculum every week. <laughs> I'd have to look at like, okay, here's all the books I'm going to need. Here's all the supplies I'm going to need. I'm yeah. gonna, you know, I mean, that's just... It's that's just this little bit of work that sets it's up set for... Up. It's a setup work, but then it pays off in the long run. Right, yeah. right. And and if you're going to set up a whole year in advance, which is what I usually do, it's quite an undertaking. Yeah. And I don't think you need to do that. I mean, you could definitely just set it up in pieces if you want. Or oh, do set month, up your first month, month to month or something. Yeah. Right. You, you know, you don't have to <laughs> go crazy like that. I, I just love to get the planning done so that when we start... I plan and then execute, which is just the PM in me. So yeah. but you don't have to do it that way. You don't have to go crazy like that. Well, talk to me a little bit about super cool headers. What are these super right. cool headers? So um, cards don't have, you know, you can put you can put covers on them or whatever, but they don't have anything kind of built in to Trello to make them look snazzy. But there's a ways that you can. So there's a great app called Word Swag that people on Trello for Home Educators recommend and I've used. It's just a really, it's a really easy app that allows you to make kind of snazzy titles with cool backgrounds. So I have snazzy titles for Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, you know, all the days of the week, just to make those lists look cool. It's uh, just, I appreciate it. I mean, it's just a snazzy thing. It's not, <laughs> you know, it, it doesn't serve a purpose, um, except that it's great for that. You can also use them to make dividers. Like you could have one that says geography. Everything under that list is going to be, you know, all that. And, and again, know. if you're using this as, as the template of your thing or your template of your projects, you only have to do it once and then just keep copying from that one template. So mm-hmm. you don't have to do it every single time. You know, that's the beauty of templates. Speaking of templates, what about this master board using it as a template? Right. So if you have a master board, so the way that I did template lists where I had everything that the curriculum uses every week in that list, all the spines and, you know, I know we're going to do a science component. I know we're going to do a reading component. I fill them in. You can do the same thing with a whole board. So you could just have a board that's a template. Wow. So say I have a board that says... Uh, ho- homeschool, you know, Blossom in Early Years Volume 2, whatever. And then your Monday, Wednesday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, whatever, already has populated in the spine books and the um, the major movements, okay, reading and math and whatever, all these pieces, right? And then you go in there on the weekend and you open your curriculum and you just populate just those items for this week. Mm-hmm. And then you work through the week and you copy the board and you, d- you delete the board and you make a new board for the next week. 
you could do that too. Some people like that more than seeing it in lists because mm. sometimes depending on how much stuff you have going on every week, your list can get kind of long. You yeah, when really you're scrolling through them. Especially when you use the beautiful cover images, they can get, right. you know, a couple thumb scrolls deep. You know? Right. Maybe you have two children or three children and you're all doing doing these, right? So that might be a lot to have all these lists created. Maybe you want a board, which is just, it's big. It takes up the entire screen on your computer. You can have different lists per day, and then you can just populate what all your kids are doing. So you could say, you or you could just say, um, this is my week, and one column's geography, and one column's math, and one column's reading, one column is uh, social studies or whatever. And you could just have templates and fill them all in for each kid and what they're going to do for that day. You could do that on Sunday, and then when you're done with the week, get rid of that board and do a new one, or archive all those cards and put new ones in. So, you know, some different ideas. Just depending on like what clicks with your brain and works best for you. So it's it's really a visual taste is totally. kind of what it is. Okay. It, it all really works the same. Yeah. It's just, I find that the key to planning after being a PM for quite a while is not necessarily. And might I add everybody, she didn't want to ever become a PM when she mm-hmm. sure started, you know, working as an engineer. She goes, oh, I never want to be a manager. I never <laughs> want to become a PM. And guess what she became? A manager and then a PM. And then she's pretty darn good at both of them. So that's kind of the funny thing. But, it, you know, I just yeah, find it, that it's not. It's just a mentality. Like, I think I think most people, you know, maybe if they made it this far and they haven't like pulled the, pulled the oh my God parachute and they're thinking, okay, I, this Trello thing sounds interesting. It's a great way to kind of plan. You know, it's not it's not as scary as you think. As long as you understand that you have, a, it, this is a board and you're putting little sticky things into it. Like think of it as like push pins on an index card right. and you're putting things on there. And if you can wrap your head around that and think about how would you, you know, maybe you like to use a board in a different way. See, I'm more of a Kanban guy. So I like to have work in progress. I like to have my backlog and I like to have the done items. So you kind of built that for me with the weekly days and then I have the completed items and I have my backlog, which is coming up so I can pull anything off the stack. Like this Mm -hmm. week I accidentally pulled off the story for next week. Mm -hmm. And then I, I I had to do both stories for this week. And so I had to do some rearranging, but you know, for me it was, it was easy to move the cards around just, you know, on my, on the app on my phone, super easy. So it really, you know, really think about like, this is not a very complex tool to use. It's just, you know, push pins and index cards on a on a digital board if you can wrap your head around that you can really you know use it the way you feel most comfortable absolutely and those demo videos that we yeah. have linked in the There's show notes are show super notes, yes. helpful just watch them and you'll you'll totally understand what we're talking about and a lot of times with tools like this you just got to go play with it right right I, I would say watch the demos then go play with it the, the key to planning i think is obviously you have to have the right information but it's not the, the, the best part of planning, if you want to be really successful at it, is organizing that information in such a way that it works for you. Mm-hmm. It doesn't matter if this is my way to do it, right? Yeah. And and that that's the problem we have with a lot of different PM tools and stuff, even at work, is that, you know, there's a way that like the company wants you to plan or something. Yeah. And you do that. And it's totally unuseful to you because it's not the way that your brain works and wants to accept that data. So for me, I'm highly visual. Matt's a Kanban person. I'm, I'm a work in progress person. I want to limit my work in progress, keep right. it to very short tasks. I've talked about this with my micro lessons. So I actually do this with my daughter with, mm-hmm. you know, the work that we're doing. So I'm more of a work in progress, limiting your work in progress to maximizing your throughput. And so I have just a little bit different way my brain works than yours, mm-hmm. but we still use the same tool and accomplish the same tasks. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Figure out the way that it clicks for you and then make your plan to fit your style and what works because you know, I could give you my plan and you'd be like, I have no idea what this is. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. So um, last advanced topic I just wanted to talk about really quickly is if you want to... This is the unholy synergy of Excel and Trello. Go. It is. It is. Okay. Go. Okay. I do. I'm quivering with excitement. So um, what you can do is you can make a list in Excel. Like let's say you copied out the table of contents from the curriculum, for example. Um, you could take that in Excel... You you um, click on the top cell, drag down so that you highlight, you select the whole thing, and you know copy it, and then go over to Trello into a list and hit paste, or you can actually even just drag it across, and it mm. will make a card for every single item in the Excel list. So each cell becomes a card. Exactly. 
Okay, that's some next level stuff right there. I mean, I think so. So, right. you know, and I'm sure that there is plenty more that I haven't discovered. The one other thing I would say on advanced stuff is there but is... I have to admit, you, your boards are extremely complex. You, you use them all the time and mm-hmm. it's really advanced. That's you're probably on the upper echelon of users for the. You know, you'd think so until you get on that on that Facebook group, and then. So one thing I would you get say, some crazy. You get some crazy. Pinterest. Oh my gosh, there's some people doing some amazing stuff. I just Pinterest I'm, like, I'm in awe. I think it's okay. it's awesome. One thing I'd mention too about advanced stuff is on the right side of the Trello screen when you you know inevitably get Trello um, and check it out, there is a button on there called Butler, and basically with the free version, I think you're allowed to add like two two pop-ups maybe or two power-ups i'm sorry um but in the paid version you can add many more but they're basically small extensions that have been added to trello that let you do different things like a plug-in or something kind of like, like a plug-in and there's a million of them and they all do different things but if you have the free version you're only allowed to have like two per board i think and you can have different ones on different boards but um one of them that I had allowed, like every new card had a uh, a little checklist embedded within it that I could pre-set up. And I set it up to say, um, for books, uh, own, library, to buy, whatever. And then every time I create a card, that was automatically there. And I could just click right away on each book book if i had to get it or whatever it didn't i didn't end up keeping that one but there's a, just a ton they do a bunch of different stuff so if you want to do something wacky you want to play with something it, advanced tip you can go click on that and look at the power-ups and see you know what you might want to add and if you get the gold version there's like i don't know a bunch of other power-ups. how much is the gold version do you know i don't know off the it's top a, of my it's head. one of those per month things right uh, yeah and, and i don't think it's all that expensive per month okay. i mean I, I think it's it's reasonable if you really use it but you can hear all this stuff i've talked about today all the way i set up my boards and move things around and have checklists and link stuff i've done all this with the free version i yeah. probably have i don't know 20 plus boards so and i've seen folks have many more than that so the free version on this is quite powerful so we always make the joke that our youngest will never get anything of her own. She'll always get hand-me-downs. <laughs> talk a, just talk a little bit about doing the work now pays off in the future, not only yes. for the current kid that's going through it, but the 16-month-old is going to be getting the exact same stuff that you've already done. So the benefit to you, the moms out there who maybe have a five or six or seven-year-old and they've got a couple kids in, you know, on deck and in the hole waiting to come into the homeschooling world, you've already done the work. Mm -hmm. And now all you're going to be having to do is say, oh, what, you know, torchlight week are we on? Put it in, right? Right. It's already done. Right. Uh, You know, until they make updates to the curriculum, like they are for Blossom and Root. Um, But even so, usually they just update the books to make them a little newer. I mean, it's not like a whole, whole cloth, you know, new one. I think, and that's the reason that I... I plan out the board. So, you know, on my Blossom and Root board, for example, I have all 36 weeks on there. And that's the specific reason that I copy those lists and I move them to this week. And then I let you do whatever you want with them. Then you can manipulate them, change them, move them around, delete them. I don't really care because my master plan is kept intact because we will be using Blossom and Root with our next daughter. And so So that's the benefit of doing the copying into another board and Mm -hmm. and because I don't want to mess anything up. I don't want you pulling Tom Kitten into the wrong week. (laughs) As I did this week. Right. So yeah, and and that's the reason that I keep that um that I keep that static. So uh and that's it's a great feature that you can, yeah, you can use it for the next kid. Okay. So you've listened to Trello. Um, you haven't pulled a parachute. You're still here. <laughs> we are going to make sure on the Facebook group when we make this post, we, you know, we'll post the the podcast episode in the Facebook group, but we'll make another thread probably, and it'll be an ask me anything. Uh, and we'll have Ariel in there. You can ask all your Trello questions. She maybe she'll take some screenshots and dump stuff in there for sure. you guys. So we'll make sure that Ariel, you know, carves out a nice little piece of time and then. She can answer all of your Trello questions. So I know there was a bunch of, I think we got 17 votes on to the right, Trello Right, and I thing. don't know if, if you So there's probably moms that... out there doing Trello right now in our group. Right. Get in there, ask Ariel questions. She's going to be more than happy to Right. The only those. thing I can't do is share um, proprietary uh, curriculum stuff. Yes. Um, you know, unless you've purchased the curriculum. But otherwise, and that's just the, that's the kind of hard thing. I wish I could share my board with everybody and, yeah, and help no. everybody to do this. But um, but I, because I we do, do copy that. and paste and, and the structure of the weekly items 
is basically the entire curriculum. We would be giving away their curriculum for free, so that's, that's right. Yeah. Away, yeah, and so and so we just can't do that. But I'm I'm more than happy to answer your questions if there's something that you're like trying to. A lot of folks are trying to replicate their paper planner or digital planner mm-hmm. into Trello now, and uh, I know there are other um, PM tools. I remember talking with uh, with Helen in Tokyo about about uh, another tool that she's using. There's other planners. There's Jira. There's there's a ton of different. At tools. this point, I'm in. Tr- I am Trello. firmly Camp yeah. Trello, and I've spent too many hours to to change it, and, and I'm really happy with it, and yeah. especially because it allows us to work separately, right? I I can do all this work, and then you're in the homeschool room. You don't need to have the curriculum in hand. You don't yeah. need to talk with me. Everything is there for you. You don't need to look up on YouTube and find the links. Everything is just embedded. I could be out somewhere, and I have before. I'm out. I'm shopping. Oh, do I have this book? I don't know. <laughs> Pull up my Trello board. Oh, no, I I need that book. Great, and I'll pick it up. Yeah, right? right. I mean, it's the the portability of it is perfect for it's, me. It's a really powerful tool for somebody to use. It's just a general planning tool around your homeschool mm-hmm. curriculum, and for it to be dynamic. Like for example, like I think that's a great example. You're out. You got to go do something, or you're at grandma's house, or you guys are on vacation. You brought the books. Oh, I forgot which story we have to read i forgot what we have mm-hmm. to do what's that nature study we have to do with oh, and this has Root? been terrific yeah. i've been able to take right the, there. take the list take a screenshot of it and send it to grandma when we used to be able to send our daughter to grandma's house and yeah. send her with all her books and say oh uh here's a little list of what she needs to do this week yeah. and she'd be like great and she would take care of all the homeschool stuff that week according to the list that i had in trello i didn't need to Take, type out a long text message or an email or something like right, that. Right, I didn't need to take copies of the curriculum or, or or pick up my curriculum binder and put it put it there. So I just think that's terrific and I yeah. I love I also love the flexibility for Blossom and Root Early Years Volume 2 for example, since this is what we're in right now. I know we keep mentioning that, but uh they have a number of books and nature studies that are seasonal. You yeah. know, I mean you could really do them any time, but I don't want to read The Snowy Day. In June, right? I just again, unless you not... live in Vermont in the mountains, <laughs> maybe. So I I don't want to do that, right? So I was able to say, well, great. I'm going to take you know week four, and I'm going to do everything from that. But I'm going to take the book, and I'm going to move it back to week forty, mm-hmm. and I'm take week forty's book and move it up. Yep. And I can make that swap, and you're not the wiser. Nobody's the wiser about it. I can take the nature. Yeah. Oh, well, hey, you know, it's not fall right now, so we can't study leaves. I'm just going to move that to fall and take something from the fall to, from this other week that's, you know, it could be done anytime, wildflowers, and I'm going to move it up. So I can make some of those decisions to move things around. If I feel like a book or um, a part of the study is going to go better with a holiday or a trip we're taking or I mean, whatever, I can, I can be free to take the curriculum and move things around if I need to, which is great. I mean, uh, or, hey, I tried to get that book at the library that we were supposed to read this week. Guess what? It's not available. It's going to be delayed a few weeks. No problem. I'll take the book and I'll toss it back a couple weeks in my Trello board, move up another book that I can get right now, and we'll move on without having to cross something out, reference. We did this in Torchlight Pre-K before I started using Trello Mm -hmm. because Every week in Torchlight Pre-K, they go through and talk about a letter of the week, mm-hmm. which is awesome. The problem is that our daughter was also going to two-day-a-week, half-day Montessori. They were also talking about a letter of the week. Yeah. And we did not want our daughter to be doing two different letters, you know, one at home and one at school, because that's confusing to her, and she was just learning her letters. So I wanted to align them. So then every every time we did it, it was off, right? So yeah. I was always like, you had to look at it and go, oh not those exercises and i said no 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 go back to week such and such and then do it and you flip 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 oh this week okay um we had the same thing with preschool math at home which is used in torchlight pre-k we started it she was actually a little bit above that level and so we didn't want to start something that would be boring to her she was kind of halfway through where they were let's say so you started there, but again, flip 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 <laughs> go to that yeah, page no. for this piece you're like taking pieces from different weeks and I would, I will, when our, when our younger daughter goes through Torchlight Pre-K, I will put it into Trello because that's just, it's a no brainer for me. It's the easiest way to go and it offers ultimate flexibility for homeschool families. So I, we can't highly recommend it enough. And if you have any questions, like as Matt said, just reach out. I, I'm more than happy to help. I hope, I hope this wasn't too, too technical and overwhelming. I hope, I don't, I hope no one's overwhelmed. Watch those demos. If you feel like, 
I don't know what you just said. You were talking too fast. Just <laughs> watch those demos because they're they're comforting. They're inspiring. It's like, I can do this. So let's jump into what we're into this week. It's a great little book series called The Kingdom of Renly. We've actually, this is by Jordan Quinn. Jordan Quinn. She's written a bunch of little, I think it's up to 12 or 13 books uh, now. Yeah, I think we're at 13 and I think we're probably six or seven we're, books in. Yeah, we're six or seven books in. These are kind of a fantasy uh, story, early reader uh, chapter books. Maybe yeah, they're, they're first chapter. They're, they're yeah, great first chapter books. But they're, they're very early chapter books. There are pictures on every single page. Really beautiful kind of digital watercolory black and white photos. Um, it's it's centered around these two kids. One's a prince, another one's just kind of a common girl, and they're good friends. And they go on all these adventures, and every book is a new adventure. And they go to the various areas of the kingdom, and there's like, you know, goblins, and then there's dragons, and there's magicians. And, and they always have some good moral with what they're doing. All, I mean, there's always something there's really a, positive to be learned. Yeah, there's always a positive moral tale with it, every one of them. They're about 70 pages long. You can read it in one sitting in less than an hour. Right. I think I think I've read it before in about 30 minutes or so, yeah. just kind of reading it through. My daughter is, or our daughter is so into it that she's yeah. just like, read, so if, read, read, if, read, read. If you got that kid who's ready for chapter books, but maybe if there's no pictures, you know, if there's a picture every third page, they can kind of like, you lose connection. Mm-hmm. This is maybe a great bridging chapter book for that when you're kind of right. going from children's books and you're trying to get them into chapter books. And they just can't hold the interest long enough. Mm-hmm. The Renly books are just so good. It's W R E N L Y. We'll have it in the show notes. Renly right. is the the name of the kingdom, and it's they have a famous bird. It's a wren, and that's like their their kingdom's bird. Yeah, and the uh, the first book in the series is the Lost Stones. That's yes. the one we'll, we'll link. What I like about this book series, we started with chapter books. Our daughter really loved all the. Uh, rainbow fairies books um i don't know if anyone knows about the there's 150 of them oh my god there's so many of them right she really loves them and they have these just really awful little line drawings they're not very good and 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 think of it as kind of if if people know the roll doll drawings it's kind of on that similar level kind of but worse and and there's not that many of them in any way but the stories are just i don't know (laughs) as an adult having read through i mean i know i'm not the target audience but i'm I'm the one reading them and you know i mean after this we got through like the seventh one and our daughter was like let's do more let's do more and i was like let's find something else and somebody (laughs) helpful on a facebook group recommended renly i really like it the drawings are excellent they are still black and white but they're actually very detailed and they're kind of on they kind of have a scale yeah they're grayscale with the they have different values you know like there's dark black light gray gray you know and white yeah they, they they're really great there's a little bit of a you know value changes across the image so yeah. it's really nice um the images are beautiful really you know a lot of expressions and when they get into some, kind of the the fantasy creatures like the goblins or the i don't think it's a goblin the ogres and or the fairies or the you know the the wizards really beautiful drawings like yeah they've done very really detailed nice and really capture the imagination and and can kind of lift up the story a little bit beyond just you know the simple six or seven right. pages I mean, it of is letters, a simpler yeah. chapter Words, book. Yeah. Um, it's great. It's great now reading it to our just newly five year old. She loves it as a read aloud. And then we bought some of the books as we were getting them from the library. We bought some of them for her to be able to read when she starts reading chapter books herself because mm-hmm. they're great first readers. As an adult, I appreciate that they're not super boring they do build um yeah and you can read them out of order certainly but you know if you have read the previous books there's nuggets of those in the next books that yeah like how did go, he oh. get it how did he get his pet dragon and how did the girl get her horse and you know right. all those type of things are answered through the book but you're right they're all standalones right you you could read them out of order it would be fine but yeah. it is fun to it, be like yeah. oh yeah i know where that came from and exactly you know great um just great morals through all of it i i thought i thought anyway they always have a good lesson at the end mm-hmm. they did some things that i thought weren't weren't as cliche as i expected them yeah. to be i mean there was a couple of things like oh they're going that way okay and she definitely really likes them, um, and it's hard to find something I think that's for this age group that can be engaging for adults too. So, yeah. So go out if you're looking for a great kind of early chapter book. You're looking for something to fill, you know, a couple nights of reading. The Kingdom of Renly is a good suggestion. We've been picking them up at the library, so check it out. Thanks so much for joining us today and making us a part of your homeschool journey. 
please engage with us on social media. Join our Homeschool Together podcast group on Facebook and find us at Homeschool Together podcast on Instagram. We'd love to hear your feedback, questions, and recommendations. Until next time. Happy homeschooling!